dare great things for Christ. Christ calls us to dare great things. In the marketplace, as well as in the mission field, there has never been a time like the present for the spirit of the Catholic entrepreneur. Now is the time for men and women of great courage and great vision to engage our church and our culture. Now is the time to dare great things. And here is your host as we dare great things, Father Nathan Cromley, the president and founder of the St. John Institute. Making decisions is one of the most important aspects of leadership. Our people count on us to make decisions and to make them well. And the decisions of a leader can jeopardize or bless the entire organization. But making choices is not something that comes easy. How do we know which of the many possible good things to choose from is the right one? For a Christian, Christ comes to bring us clarity. But what does this clarity look like? How do we know what God's will is and what we're supposed to do? You know, ever since starting my ministry to business leaders, I've been amazed at how few people actually understand what I'm trying to do. Usually the people who understand best are people who are in leadership already. But when you're not in a leadership role and you haven't thought a lot about the challenges that leadership poses, either in the world of business, of course, or in other spheres, uh, you know, you, you don't always appreciate the insight that we bring to this from the leadership network. And the insight is simple. The experiences that you have in leadership of business and organizations can actually be of benefit to the church and to the church's mission of sanctification. And the church's wisdom uh, as she sanctifies over the eras actually has insights that can help you in your practical leadership over your organizations. And today's topic is one of those areas that is where this is the clearest and where its impact is the most important. How do you make decisions? It's even been said that leadership is the capacity someone has to make decisions. I'm thinking of a talk by Jeff Bezos, a founder of Amazon, where he says that, listen, the reason why senior executives are hired is that they need to make three good decisions every week. And you think, I have to make 30,000 every day, you know, it's, and, and which is true, but like that's what he's trying to say is that the higher you go up in the organization, the more that you're there in order to steer the organization correctly. And that, according, this is of course just his little talk, right? But it makes sense anyway that as you go higher, you, your decisions have greater and greater importance. And so if you're the leader at that level and you have that much authority underneath you, you absolutely need to be thinking, how do I make these decisions well? If you're a CEO, for example, or a small business owner or a single entrepreneur with what you realize that not only do you have to vision where your organization is going, where your enterprise is, is, is going and have that capacity to change in mid flight and readapt it and rethink it. But you also have to make the decisions about how to get there. And these are almost two separate uh, functions of the mind and functions of leadership. But that second one is particularly tricky. How do I actually accomplish what I've put forward for myself to do? And every form of leadership requires both of these. People will turn to the leader asking, what's your vision? Where are we going? It's one of the very first things you ask a new bishop, for example, or it's what you ask a, a new president of a, of, a, of a college. What's your vision for this place, right? So, it, and woe to that person who on day one of their job says, you know what, I, I don't really have one. <laughs> Usually what they'll say is, well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of one. Give me some time. I'm going to create that vision. And they do. And if you create that vision in a collaborative way with the same people who are going to execute it afterwards, well, you're a step up in the whole operation. And it's a great thing. But then deciding how to get there is another function of the mind. And it's equally as important as a leader. And, and sometimes it's where we trip up the most. Because yes, I can have a vision for where we're going, but then if I have to prioritize amongst the myriad circumstances that I have in front of me, the best course of action, I have to be able to take into consideration, number one, every possible influence to the action, 
And then number two, all of the steps that are going to be necessary to get there. And sometimes that's just not possible. And if it is possible, usually it's something that has to be adjusted again and again and again as we learn more and more things and as factors change. I mean, getting the recipe right of just what's necessary to produce what you want to get done, what you're paid to get done is already a wonderful success. Getting that recipe right is the first step. But at the same time, it's not the only thing that's going to get you there because then you've got to learn how do I actually proceed? What comes first and what first thing coming will actually have the biggest impact to make sure that I get to the second thing that's properly there. And getting the steps in the right, the number of steps set and then the steps in the right order in understanding how that order could change depending on the people involved and the circumstances of, of your industry all of those questions, the machinery that could break down or that's there, the parts that are on back order, the customer's prioritization level, the amount, all, every factor possible has to then be gathered and understood so that you can see what affects what. And this is really the genius of strategy and of prioritization. The more that you understand the industry that you're in and the more that you understand the factors involved, the better you're going to be at prioritizing what should happen next. This is something a genius like Warren Buffett, for example, who's able to invest in companies and pick companies that actually are on the way out or fizzling and see the potential in them to leverage himself properly or to be restored and renewed in order to create the, the new markets he needs for investments. It's something that just comes from a real genius that he has of understanding the market. And that's in the world of investments, but it's the same in the world of welding. It's the same in the world of bricklaying. It's the same in the world of mothering. And every one of these spheres, if you understand the circumstances and are able with your, with your power of your brain to really grasp how one interacts with the others, you're going to be better at setting a priority. This needs to come first because by doing this, will have the greatest influence on the other things, will enhance the overall mission in the best way. Or you can't even do what you think you're going to do unless first you've done this instead, right? It's like having this understanding and this knowledge, it's either the product of genius or the product of experience, one of the two. But in any case, it's essential for all good leaders. It's one of the reasons why usually, especially in smaller companies, when someone's really good at doing something, we end up making them the manager, right? And we, because we say, you actually know how to get this done. Lead the others now to make sure that the thing gets done correctly. But as everyone knows at the same time, this is one of the trickiest aspects of leadership. It's the planning that drives the execution that drives success, but it takes a special kind of mind and it takes patience. It takes collaboration and deliberation. It takes the timing of understanding and taking the time to really understand and consider things in their details. And there are people that really excel at this and that's why they make for excellent leaders. And every team needs to develop this consciousness so that they can do this together. This decision-making on prioritization of action amidst change. But remember, business isn't the only place where you find this. Anywhere where you are in charge, you're going to have to do this. It's not enough to be a charismatic leader and to be able to say, this is our goal and now we're going to go over there and we're going to take it. That's not, except it might be good enough when you're alone, but it's not good enough when you have an organization. When people depend upon you, they need clarity and clarity comes from order and order comes from intelligence that has thought through amidst the variety of circumstances, the prioritization of what we need to accomplish. Strategy is a function of choice and focus. And strategy is essential for motivating and leading a group and organization of any size, from a family that's going on a vacation, to a family that's planning a reunion, to a company that's launching an ad campaign. Every single level it always is going to depend upon how well they can strategize and make these decisions. And the Christian faith is no stranger in this domain. Actually, it has insights that can transform from within the leader's ability to prioritize and strategize well.
Would you like to hear more from Father Nathan? Join the St. John Leadership Network and receive a two-minute glance at the gospel every Sunday morning right to your phone. To learn more, go to www.stjohnleadershipnetwork.org slash member and join for free today. So we who are Christians in our leadership, right? We, you ask the question, what difference does Christ make? We know that leaders have to make decisions and that leaders have to make a plan for how to get done what we all know we need to get done. It's not enough, in other words, just to have a vision. It's not enough to have motivation. You actually have to have a plan in order to allow people to collaborate with you better. If you don't have a plan, people won't follow you because they'll start in this adventure and they'll see how much energy is involved and they'll feel like you're constantly changing the goalposts and they won't understand what they're supposed to do and they feel demoralized, they feel unappreciated, they can feel like they've been used. And that of course is not what an employee is supposed to feel like or anyone for that matter who's following your vision, but it's how they will feel unless you take the time to plan. And planning, ah, that takes choice. Choosing what will come first and what we focus on in order to get there. That planning stage, everyone knows this is essential to any kind of organizational leadership. The question then becomes, what advantage does a Christian have coming from their faith and relationship of Christ in this process? The process isn't going to change. The process is the same for everybody. It's the nature of a thing. It's the nature of the human experience. Every group human endeavor requiring collaboration requires clarity. It's as simple as that. But when Jesus Christ became man, he in entered into the fullness of human experience and therefore he also collaborated. But being God, he collaborated perfectly and he gives us the pattern and the model of collaboration. He shows us, in other words, in the way that he leads and the way that he leads us continually, even to this day, the perfection of that clarity, the perf in the perfection of his leadership. And so by studying him and studying his word, we can understand and have an, not only an insight, but also a grace, the grace coming from his presence at, to, to up our ability to do this same thing. What we are doing is the same, namely making decisions and prioritizations and strategy and leadership. But how we do it will be different. We do it in, with, and through Christ under the motion of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's a big difference. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about what that difference is. What's the difference that Christ makes on strategy? And that difference, I'm going to call it Christian clarity. Briefly put, Christian clarity means the clarity that I have as a leader on what to do coming from the light of God. And for most of us, we say, well, that sounds amazing. I wish God would speak to me. And most of us then say, God, I'm waiting for you to speak to me. And we, we know that he speaks to us, but we don't always hear him. And, and that's where a lot of us get hung up because we say, I'm supposed to be listening to God. God's supposed to be leading me. But in fact, I feel like I don't know where I'm going. And I really wish he would show me the way. And then priests will come to you and say, well, he is the way, right? So enjoy the journey. And we say, this, it's not a lot of fun when you're trying to make decisions. And so we just go back to making decisions in a very human and natural way. And I want to begin by saying, hey, listen, that's actually okay. Meaning that you, the fact is, your prudence was made by God. Your will and your mind were made by God. You using them is not at all an offense to him. As a matter of fact, it's a prerequisite. This is what God asks us to do. If I'm in charge of an organization, I can't just act like I'm being led divinely by some inspiration that no one else can share. I need to be able to justify my decisions with data. I need to be able to present them with clarity and I have to be able to share the vision that I have with those with whom I'm going to collaborate and everyone underneath or behind me who's following my leadership. That's just, that can't change. That's the nature of what it means to operate in an organization. And, and, and God as, is not asking us to change that. He's just asking us to be willing to take a step further, to not limit our decisions to merely 
a human exercise of prudence, but at times to be willing to let him lead us, both in that process itself and where that process leads us, but also in sometimes taking a new direction and allowing the process to, itself to work based upon a new set of criteria. You see, there's, there's two aspects to this. The, the first is what Christian clarity looks like for a group of people or for an organizational process of decision making. And there, the decision making is going to be guided by the Holy Spirit, but it will remain essentially the same. Namely, that you have to look at the factors and then prioritize what you're going to do in order to hit the desired goal. The goal might change. The factors might be enlightened by a different way of looking at the human person or a different way of evaluating each of them in the light of a, a more elevated vision, but the process will remain essentially the same. The other factor is what you're going to do as an individual leader, meaning do I implement this process or not? And I want to focus in on that second aspect a little bit more here. Because this is an aspect that it engages all of us, whether we're in an organization or whether we're at home right now deciding on whether or not we need to do the laundry before or after we take a nap. <laughs> that too is a, is a process and a strategy around how we're going to succeed in the day. The processing, processing and strategizing, in other words, is not just a function of organizational leadership but it's also in every one of our individual lives as we choose to engage or not engage our talents towards a given objective with a view to an ultimate goal. And that, my friends, is something which really is not easy to do. How do we know whether to homeschool? How do we know whether or not to have a family reunion this year? How do we know if we should go and visit grandma and grandpa before they pass away? Or how do we know in our individual company if it's okay for me to take this promotion or not? In my individual leadership of my own life and the influence that I'm trying to engage in, what should I do? What's God's will for me? Almost like what kind of goal should I really be aiming my organization for? It's true that I then need to collaborate and to strategize, but there's already a decision saying, should we go for that period? Before I even start to talk about whether or how we're going to get there, the question is, is this really the right step on the process of, the, of my life or of my company? Where does God want us to go? And, and that's going to be so important for us to determine then what steps we take in order to get there. So what I'm describing is usually not a really welcome topic because it makes a lot of us uncomfortable. It's a weak spot for many of us in our leadership because the answer is we feel like we don't know. And so what we do is we just put our head down and we just make decisions the best that we can. Well, every time you're making a decision, whether it's with God or without God, you're using the same functionality. You're starting with a desire for something that's good, and then you're making steps in order to get there in the best way possible. Well, God's going to enter into that process, and he's going to give you an even greater good, the best of all goods to desire, and he's going to help you to choose the best steps in order to get there. So we all say, great, what's missing is, is the clarity of his communication to us. <laughs> because when we're working, usually we're looking for a plan, and it seems like God doesn't really communicate the plan, right? So, what God, what am I supposed to do this morning? Wouldn't it be great if he gave you a little note, and he's like, please accomplish the following tasks and get them done by midnight tonight. You know, that'd be wonderful. You say, okay, thanks, God. And we would just run off to be his happy little servant, and we would be so happy but we'd also not necessarily be in a relationship with him as we do it. We would do things for God, but we wouldn't do them with God. And we wouldn't be doing them for his greater glory in a relationship with him, because in the end, if he gives us a job, we would use him and use his commandments in order for us just to keep going in our own little lives. God wants us to do something more than keep going in our own little lives. God wants us to open our hearts to live with him, meaning him through us, him in us, and us through him and us in him. 
the ultimate health of our lives doesn't come from us living alone, but from us living in union with him. And for this reason, he communicates with us in a very unique way, and he asks us to do things that are rather astounding, like walking on water. Would you like to start your Thursday mornings with a scriptural leadership lesson? Join the St. John Leadership Network, where Father Nathan hosts a 30-minute call at 6.30 a.m. in all four U.S. time zones. To learn more, go to www.stjohnleadershipnetwork.org slash member and join for free today. You know, I'm constantly amazed at how God actually leads us uh, in the clarity that he gives because the clarity that we long for and the clarity that God gives sometimes seem like two very different things. We long for the clarity that we give to our people underneath us. When we try to give plans, we make SMART goals, right? These are goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based, right? We just, and we all know that. That's what makes for successful execution when the goals are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. Okay, so why doesn't God do the same thing with us? <laughs> Isn't it puzzling? It almost like we wish God would just treat us like, like we treat the people underneath us. Why doesn't God do that? Why do his goals seem sometimes to be not so specific, unable to be measured, difficult to attain, etc.? right? It's almost like God has the opposite uh, effect. And it's not because he's denying the value of smart goals or denying the value of the process that's human as we deliberate. He wants to assume that into something even better, which is to not deny it. You got to go through it, but to operate at the same time with the wisdom that comes from the Holy Spirit. And that doesn't mean that in the execution of these things, we deny the importance of this, okay? Our people underneath us, they require these smart goals and our process of collaboration. Th this is just the nature of it. God never denies that. But there's another function, another level that we operate on thanks to the Holy Spirit. And it has certain advantage to it as well. I'm not talking here about how we make plans and, and, and set objectives just in itself because that's obviously something that doesn't really change. To get to, to C from A, you need to pass through B. There's a, a God-given light there, and sure, God can illuminate and can help us to make sure we see all of, all, of, all of those steps. This is a little bit of a different angle I'm taking on it now. I'm looking at it from the point of view of you as an individual, trying to say, what are, what are the next goals in my life? Should I take this next job? Should I move to a different career? Should I engage my, my, my team towards this or that enterprise from an ethical point of view? Meaning, does it make sense for me? Is God calling me to invest my resources and my time towards to, to hitting this or that mark? A lot of us just feel like we're leading in the dark because we're living in the dark. Here's how Christ can bring some clarity. There are three steps that every one of us makes as a Christian. And the first is the most important. We begin by a desire. That is, we don't discern just in the darkness about everything that's possible. We start by letting God speak to our hearts. What is it that you want? Pray for his spirit to guide you. Surrender yourself to God, but free up your heart to actually want something. Once you have that desire, then you start to test that spirit to say, well, is this possibility moral? Is it, is it against the Ten Commandments? Is what I want something that's wrong? Is there any reason that I would not do it? Right? And then I start to look not only at its possibility, but at its feasibility. And I say, well, what, do, what kinds of demands will taking this on actually make to my, my vocation? And is there a way that I could do this that will actually enhance the bigger perspective of what God's calling me to do in my life as a whole. If I'm married, for example, well, I can't go ahead and do something that's going to take away and hurt my marriage. My marriage comes first. And in the context of that, I can then say, well, how can I, what will I choose to do that will most enhance and develop the vocation that I'm in on? 
right? And then I can then make a list of pros and cons. I can look for other circumstances in my life that can then help leverage that. But in the end, I get to make a decision. And that's the beautiful thing. A lot of us are afraid of it, but it's actually the high point. What a blessing. For me to be able to make a decision means that God is validating my freedom and allowing me to follow my heart, thinking it through correctly so that then I can engage. The glory of a Christian, in other words, is not just in our planning. It's in our passing into an execution where action gets to speak of love. What a blessing this is. What an incredible dignity we have. In this whole process, God has been active, giving us a clarity by guiding the natural usage of our mind. He inspires us with goals that come from his heart, allows us then to deliberate with our minds, guiding them with clarity to see what's involved and to see what his priorities are in the execution. And then finally giving us that glorious freedom to make this plan something that comes with, from us. Don't be afraid of that wonderful freedom. Be not afraid. You might feel afraid, but don't be afraid. <laughs> you see the difference? I can feel the fear, but I'm not going to let it do dominate me because I'm a child of God. And I know that no matter what step I take next, he's going to guide me. His light and his truth will never fail. But I'm not Share great things for Christ. Share your feedback with Father Nathan. Send us an email at info at stjohninstitute.org. That's info at stjohninstitute.org. And don't forget to subscribe to premium video content to form, unite, and inspire you at Eagle Eye Pro on our website, eagleeyeministries.org. That's eagleeyeministries.org.